Hey guys, my name is Lin. I am a registered nurse that has two years experience working on the massage telly floor. And welcome everybody back to my channel, Lin's Daily NCLEX. And today we are going to talk about meningitis. Actually on my job, I have never encountered with any meningitis case. But infection disease is such a hot topic on NCLEX. So today, let's practice some meningitis NCLEX style questions. Question number one. A community nurse is giving a lecture about meningitis to the public. She states what meningitis is. Which statement is correct? A. Meningitis is an inflammation of the central nervous system or inflammation of the brain. Or B. Meningitis is characterized by multiple areas of demyelination from inflammatory scarring of the myelin squash surrounding neurons in the brain and spinal cord. Or C. Meningitis is an acute viral or bacterial infection causing inflammation of the meningeal tissue covering the brain and the spinal cord. Or D. Meningitis is the disruption of the blood supplies to an area of the brain, resulting in the tissue necrosis and the sudden loss of brain function. The answer is C. Meningitis is an acute viral or bacterial infection causing inflammation of the meningitis tissue covering the brain and the spinal cord. Option A is the definition for encephalitis. Option B is multiple sclerosis. And option D is stroke. Okay, next question. A community nurse is giving a lecture on potential outbreaks of infectious meningitis. Which population is most at risk for an outbreak? A. A client recently discharged from the hospital who have a hypertension crisis. Or option B. A former inmate who lives in a hardware house. Option C. A traveler who came back from a developing country. Option D. A worker that works in a large space. The answer is B, the former inmates that now live in the hallway house. Outbreaks of infection meningitis are often likely to occur in those dense communities, such as college dorms or jails. Option A is wrong. Although hospitalized patients are weaker, but they are not at risk for catch any kinds of meningitis. C is also a wrong answer. Some diseases are more popular in developing countries, such as tuberculosis, and uh, hepatitis, but not for meningitis. Option D is also wrong. And option D is the opposite from option B. Someone that lives and works at a space that has a lot of rooms reduce the risk for meningitis. Okay, next question. When the community nurse is talking about septic meningitis, a client asks the nurse, I'm so confused. What is septic meningitis? Which statement is the most accurate by the nurse? A. Septic meningitis is an illness that causes inflammation of the linings of the brain by virus or other non-infectious sources. Or option B. Septic meningitis is a brain and spinal cord hemorrhage caused by an artery in the brain as well as the spinal busting and causing localized bleeding in the surrounding tissues. Option C. This is a bacterial infection of the tissues that covers the brain and the spinal cord. Or option D, septic meningitis is a brain disease that is passed on to people and animals by insects such as mosquitoes or ticks. I know you can get it right. The answer is option C. Septic meningitis and the bacterial meningitis, they are the same thing. So the two words are used interchangeably. Option A is the wrong answer. This is an explanation for a septic meningitis. A septic meningitis caused by virus. A septic meningitis and virus meningitis are often used interchangeably. 
Option B is not a right answer. Brain hemorrhage by artery in the brain is a stroke. Option D is called upper virus infection. Okay, next question. The nurse is preparing a patient diagnosis with rudal meningitis for a lumbar puncture. Which interventions should the nurse implement? Select order apply. Option A, obtain an info consent from the patients to the procedure. Option B, have the patients empty the bladder and the bowel before the procedure. Option C, place the patient with lateral recumbent with knees flat position. Option D, explain to the patient the procedure use a needle to insert into the T3 to T4 or T4 to T5 level of the back. Option E, instruct the patient to breathe rapidly and shallowly. The answer are A, B, and C. Option A, lumbar puncture is an invasive procedure, so an informed consent is required. Option B is right, empty bladder and bowel before the procedure so the patient is comfortable during it. D is wrong because the lumbar puncture, the needle inserts into L3 to L4 or L4 to L5, T3 to T5 are the thoracic spice area, so D is not the right answer. Option E is also wrong. The patient should be encouraged to breathe normal during this procedure. Okay, next question. The nurse assessing the patient diagnosis with bacterial meningitis. Which clinical findings are most likely to be seen? Select or to apply. A. Positive Babinski sign and photophobia. B. Positive Koenig sign and severe headache. C. Positive McBurry point and nausea and vomiting. D. Negative Babinski sign and nickel rigidity. E. Negative Koenig sign and possible seizures. I know you guys can get it right. The answers are A and B. A is the right answer. Positive Babinski sign is when the patient's neck is flat and then the hip and knees also flat, involuntary. It looks like an old-fashioned lazy chair. Photophobia is increased the light sensitivity. Being here says positive Koenig sign and severe headache. That is also a correct answer. Koenig sign is when the patient's knee is straight up. The patient has a lot of pain. A serious headache that isn't like any other type of headache is also a clinical finding. Headaches might continue for several months until the inflammations and irritations are resolved. Aww, the poor meningitis patients. C is not the right answer. Positive Marbury point is the fighting for appendicitis. However, meningitis patients do experience nausea and vomiting. D is wrong. It should be positive Babinski sign, not negative. However, meningitis patients do experience mucor rigidity. Option E is wrong. It should be positive for Koenig sign. Positive seizure is also right. About one third of the patient with meningitis has seizure. Okay, next question. The community nurse has a seminar at local high school. When asked by the teenager students, what are the most likely common causes of meningitis for adolescents? Which are the best responses for the nurse? Select or the apply. A. Hepatitis C virus. B. Nicerous meningitis. C. Herpes simplex virus. Or D. Perinfluenza virus. The answers are option B and option C. Option B is number one cause among teenagers. It's seen more often in less well-developed countries. Option C, herpes simplex virus, is also a correct answer. Primary herpes simplex virus has been increasingly recognized as the cause of virus meningitis in adults. Okay, next question. How many doses of meningococcal quantity vaccine are recommended for prevention of bacterial meningitis a 1 b 2 c 3 and d 4 
The answer is B. The meningococcus quantity vaccine is given in, in two doses to prevent bacterial meningitis. The first dose is recommended for all of 11 to 12 years old with the booster dose given at the age of 16. Okay, next question. The nurse is developing a plan of care for a patient diagnosis with meningitis. Which nursing goal would be most appropriate for the patient diagnosis risk for ineffective cerebral tissue perfusion related to reduction of blood flow and cerebral edema? A. The patient will maintain body temperature within normal range or B. The patient will report satisfaction with pain control Option C. The patient will be oriented to person, place and time or D. The patient will be protected from injury if seizure activity occurs. The answer is D. Because the patient with meningitis has a problem of Elton cerebral tissue perfusion, which puts the patients at risk for seizure activity. Therefore, the patient should be on seizure precautions. A will be a goal for patient with high fever. And option B will be a goal for patient with pain. And option C will be a goal for patient with delirium. Okay, next question. A healthy adolescent has meningitis and is receiving IV and oral fluids. The nurse should monitor the patient's fluid intake because fluid overload may cause A. Cerebral edema B. Hyponatremia C. Heart failure D. Hypovolemic shock I know you guys get it right. The answer is A. Because of the inflammation of the meninges, the patient is vulnerable to develop cerebral edema and increased intracranial pressure. Fluid overload won't cause dehydration. It will be very unusual for an adolescent to develop heart failure unless the overhydration is extreme. So C is wrong. Hypovolemic shock will only occur with an extreme loss of fluid or blood. So, D is a wrong answer. Okay, next question. You as the nurse are proceeding a student nurse while carrying a patient with meningitis who just gets back to the floor from his lumbar puncture procedure. Which actions by the student nurse require that you intervene? So let all the apply. Option A, the student nurse enter the room without putting on a mask. Option B, the student nurse helps the patient sit up to the bed and put a pillow behind the patient's back. Option C, monitor vital size. Option D, neurostatic check every 5 minutes with a pen light. Option E, encourage fluid intake. Option F, observe for spinal fluid that leak from puncture site. The answers are A and B and D. The nursing student should practice droplet precautions. When she goes into the patient's room, she needs to wear a mask and a goggle. And option B is the right answer because after lumbar puncture, the patient should lay flat for a few hours instead of sitting up. Option C is correct. Option D is the right answer because meningitis patient has photophobia. Use a pen light to check neural studies every 5 minutes is too frequently. It may irritate the patient and cause increased ICP. Option E says encourage fluid intake and that is the right action. So E is the wrong answer. Lumbar puncture procedure will lose some spinal flu and also meningitis patients normally has a higher temperature. They are at risk to dehydrate. And F, observe for spinal fluid leak from the puncture site is the right action. So that is the wrong answer. Okay guys, and that's it for today's meningitis NCLEX style question practice. And good luck for your neuro reset. I will see you next time. Bye.